Okay, I wanted to make a video talking about the binoculars I have here in front of you. More importantly, how I ended up at these three binoculars. Um, I've bought and sold a total of 12 different binoculars in, in the past, and uh, including these three. And these are the three that I've ended up with and that are um, I really enjoy and like. And uh, so the, just to get it out of the way to see what I ended up with, here on the right is a um, Zeiss SF 8x42. Then we have a Swarovski CL Companion 8x30. This is a Companion B. And then on the left we have a Monarch HG um, 8x42. And so real, realistically I just have these Monarchs for keeping in my vehicle maybe as an extra spare set, but the real the real two that I um, have narrowed my collection down to are these two. Um, one for a full-size pair of binoculars and one for a compact pair that can basically be uh, easy to travel or hike with. Okay, so let's, this is going to be a longer video and I'm going to basically talk about the pros and cons of the 12 different binoculars that I went through and how I ended up at these two or three. Um, starting from the very first set of serious binoculars I ever purchased. So the first set of binoculars I ever, per serious pair of binoculars I ever purchased were the Monarch 5s, Nikon Monarch 5s in 8x42. And around the same time I purchased a pair of Nikon Pro Staff 7S 8x42 for my father. And to be quite honest after having both of those I, I my, my eyes were very untrained back then but the difference between those two binoculars was very minimal there were certain there was difference in field of view with the monarch fives being larger um, the monarch fives having if I recall correctly better glare control a little bit better sharpness um, but very minor. I couldn't quite tell in the sharpness. Brightness was about the same, maybe a t hair um, in favor of the Monarch 5s. But largely, I, the Monarch 5s were a um, lot more expensive than the ProSaf 7S. I think of the entire list of binoculars I'm sitting here and looking out of the total of the 10, I want to say the Monarch 7S 8x42, in my opinion, had the best value for picture quality, ergonomics, um, and price. And I think if I recall correctly, the Monarch, uh, I'm sorry, the Pro Staff 7S's were less than $200, whereas I think I paid more than 400 for the Monarch 5's. No, I would take that back. I paid just under 400 for the Monarch 5, Nikon Monarch 5's when I purchased them years ago. Um, th my dad still has and uses a pair of 7S's and uh, my Monarch 5's have been moved along and sold. Um, so after the Monarch 5's, I, I w when I had the Monarch 5's I was very happy with them but I was just looking for something with slightly better optical quality, a little bit better field of view, a little, little bit better um, sharpness, a little bit less chromatic aberration, and so I started shopping around and I set my sights on three binoculars which I tested back to back which were the Zeiss Conquest HDs, Swarovski C SLC's 8x42, those have now been dis discontinued, and the Monarch HG's 8x42's which you can see right here. And so and obviously you know which one I ended up with, but I'll get into why. So the Monarch H, out of those three pairs of binoculars, the, um, out, the Monarch HGs on, ended up winning for me. And the reason was mainly because of how close the Monarch HGs were in terms of optical quality to the Zeiss Conquest and the Suaro SLCs, um, but largely because of how compact this package was and also the ergonomics. 
the ergonomics of these binoculars are are fan are fantastic. I think one of one of the best. I mean, these are eight by forty two full size binoculars. Yet they, I believe, weigh in at I want to say twenty two ounces, and they feel and handle like an eight by thirty two. But they're they're a full size set of binoculars, and the quality and the construction is f fantastic. This is all made out of magnesium, and so when I was comparing the Zeiss Conquest. HD to Swaro CL SLCs and these Monarch HGs. I had them all side by side at, um, in my hand at the same time. And what I found in regard in regards to sharpness between the three of them is that the Swarovski SLCs and these were all in 8x42. The SLCs were um, superior in sharpness to the H, the Conquest, and the Monarch HGs. Um, and I would say the A Monarch HGs and the Conquest were about the same in sharpness, uh, but the SLCs were definitely superior. In edge-to-edge -edge sharpness, the Conquest was slightly better than the SLCs and the, and the um, HGs. However, the Conquest is technically one because there was um, very good edge-to-edge -edge sharpness, but their field of view was narrower than um, the Monarch HG. So technically, it was more sharp edge-to-edge, -edge, but I feel as though more of the view, more of a field of view was in sharp, uh, sharp with the Monarch HGs, just because they showed more of a field of view. Um, the brightness of the three binoculars at that time, uh, where the SLCs were the brightest, which the HD, the uh, Conquest and the um, HGs being about the same, and the contrast between the three of them, the SLCs and the Monarch HGs had the best contrast, which the con and the HGs had the best contrast, but the Conquests were a little gray, they didn't have as much contrast, um, and, and uh, they were more of a neutral color. The SLCs had a little bit, were a little bit brighter, and they had, a, a, in my opinion, a little bit of a warmer image, a little bit of a yellow tint. The HGs I've still to this day find, out of all my binoculars, the most color neutral, um, along being, along having the very, best contrast. Um, actually, at this time, I also had my Monarch 5s available to compare between the SLCs, the HDs, the HGs. Um, so I had four binoculars I was comparing back to back. Obviously, the three I was mainly comparing, the SLCs, the Conquest, and the HGs were in a different class than the Monarch 5s. So almost every binocular beat the Monarch 5s on every account. Uh, very mildly so, but they still beat them on every account except for weight because the Monarch uh, fives had a, have a polycarbonate um, chassis, whereas all the, the SLCs as well as the HGs have a magnesium chassis and the Conquest have an aluminum chassis. Now, as far as uh, brightness, as I mentioned, the SLCs were the best of the four. Um, and you got to keep in mind the SLCs are twice were at the time were twice the cost. I believe they were like a thousand two hundred compared to all the other ones came in at um, the Monarch AGs. I bought for seven six hundred and eighty five. The Conquest HDs I bought for seven hundred and sixty, and I think I bought the SLCs for uh, around around fifteen hundred. And so they were rightfully better than the other two. However, the price was um, reflective of that as well. Now, look, considering the weight, um, the HGs were the lightest of the three, um, and with the Monarch 5s being even lighter than the HGs, uh, and then came the SLCs, and then the HGs were the lightest. I'm oh, sorry, the HDs were the heaviest, the Conquest, the Conquest HDs. And that's because they have an aluminum chassis and they're just very, very beefy, almost overbuilt. The color accuracy, as I mentioned, HGs 
or took the cake on that. The focus, the depth of field that stayed in focus um, between the SLCs, HGs, and HDs, the SLCs kept the most depth of field in focus. And I found that very helpful in viewing, um, whereas the HGs were, were um, not as good as the SLCs, but they were, they were much better than, they were both much better than the Conquest. The Conquest had a very thin field of view and uh, you, you just, I felt like I was always focus hunting and it was irritating in use. The focus knob smoothness, the um, H, the Conquest has had the best focus wheel um, and then the HGs and the SLCs, but the HGs is also very good. I mean, it's it's a little tight, not spongy, not vague, but it has the most amount of resistance. Um, but it is very consistent and predictable across the entire entire uh, um, field, uh, across the entire magnification band, or the focus band. Um, now, this is the thing that was the biggest determining factor for myself. If I, of the three, the Monarchs, or the uh, Monarch HGs, the Conquests and the SLCs, my favorite of those three binoculars, hands down were the Swarovski SLCs. The issue became is that I was not able to overdrive past infinity and sufficiently to correct for my vision to use the uh, binoculars without glasses on uh, for the SLCs. And for me, that ended up being a deal breaker because um, I, I really need or like the luxury of being able to use my binoculars without my glasses if I want to. And for my for for me to be able to do that, they have to have sufficient the binoculars from factory have to have sufficient overdrive past infinity to correct for my poor vision without glasses on. And certain I'm right at the edge where certain binoculars do, some don't. And obviously these three that you're seeing here all do. Hence is why I ended up with them. Um, I believe that if the SLCs were able to correct for my vision past infinity, um, I would have never ended up with uh, any of these that you see in front of you. I would have probably kept those, been happy, and never looked back. And so uh, that just goes to show I've, as how great the I believe the SLCs were. And I want to say out of all the binoculars I've looked through, the SLCs were the most pleasurable and it gave me the nicest view to look through. They're very comfortable. The eye positioning was extremely forgiving. And the picture had that yellowish tint to it, which really made the pictures very natural and warm, uh, which made it very pleasant to look through, as opposed to um, this, this binocular right here shares some of that pleasurable um, traits in the view. And this, as I mentioned, is the companion SLC. Let me let me get this out here. And this has some of that the same um, characteristics as the SLC did. I don't know if it was by design, but these are also very pleasurable to look through. Whereas these Zeiss, they're also extremely pleasurable to look through. Very forgiving. The view is very natural, vast, um, but the picture it gives you is a lot more clinical, super sharp, super accurate. The color rendition has a touch of green in it, and it's. It, I feel as though those Zeiss are more of an instrument. You, you, you're getting input from the environment and output to your eyes. Is just, this is what the picture should be. This is how it should be. I would equate these Zeiss's to uh, SF's to a like a pair of studio monitors you know you just this is how this what it's supposed to sound like if it doesn't sound good it's not an issue with the instrument it's an issue with the music and I feel like the Zeiss are the same way whereas um, not that these are not sharp it's just the way it draws the image is just a little bit um, I want to say more comfortable I, I don't know how to describe it. it's very difficult to describe it it's a little, a little bit warmer um, a little bit yellow of a tint, whereas these are a little bit cooler of a color cast, and it gets it gives you this greenish tint. 
which I don't find disruptive at all. In fact, I love using the Zeiss, but they're, they're, I categorize them mentally as an instrument. Of course, they can be used for bird watching and recreational use, but they're just so precise. Um, and not to say that these aren't, but it's just a, it, they just draw image, the, the view images in a little bit of a different manner. This is very similar to the SLCs, and so I would equate the SLCs and the CLs. You can, of course, use them as instruments to more like a, you know, like an audio file type speaker where it may color the sound, but it's largely accurate. You could probably still use them for studio monitoring, but it's just more pleasant to listen to, more pleasant to look through. Not that this isn't pleasant at all. I, I can't, you can't say that about the Zeiss. It's just the view you get is very accurate. You know, what you see is what it is. Um, and I'm telling these are very, this is very hair picking. And then, so, so regarding the SLCs, the eight, the Conquest and the Monarch HGs, as I mentioned, I really like the SLCs, but I couldn't overdrive past infinity and could not use them without my glasses. So that was a deal breaker and it, and that those needed to be sent back. Um, but those were fantastic pair of binoculars. I'm kind of sad to see that they were discontinued because at the price point, they were fa they were phenomenal, in my opinion. Um, I couldn't I couldn't really find any optical flaws, gross optical flaws with the SLC. I think there might have been a touch of the chromatic aberration control in the SLCs was superior to the Conquest as well as the Monarch HGs. Of the three, the Monarch HGs have the most chromatic aberration. And I think this is that's its fault. Um, honestly, I would have never picked up these two if it wasn't for the CA control on these. There's very good chromatic aberration control in the center of the image, but as you move to 50% of the image and further out, these have a ton of, these have more chromatic aberration than in my opinion they should. Now, if they had to, there are compromises needing to be made regarding um, if they could, you know, deliver the nice, accurate colors with the nice contrast um, in the budget they needed to allow for it, I don't know. But out of 50%, 50% and then to the edge of the view, there's, there's too much chromatic aberration in this, these pairs. The Conquests were better controlled, but not too much so. The SLCs were excellent, excellent control of chromatic aberration. Um, and that's, that's what really made me um, like the SLCs. So the Conquest, um, they, they would correct for my vision past infinity, but I just didn't like the ergonomics of the Conquest because um, the folk, the depth of field that would stay in focus was very narrow. They were very, very heavy, large binoculars. Um, they, they're aluminum. They're very durable, but uh, they're just they're also very heavy. And the, f the field of view that stayed in focus w was very thin. And I also got a lot of blackouts. And it was the eye position was very finicky with the conquest. And so um, every time I would take them out, I felt like it was, I was just fighting the ergonomics of the Conquest and it wasn't quite enjoying viewing whatever it was viewing. Whereas compared to these, um, these were immersive. There was nothing in the ergonomics that were um, deal breakers and they were very pleasant and easy to use. And that's why I ended up keeping them. And I used these for probably about a year or two but every now and then when I was out viewing a certain thing, watching birds against the sky, what have you, that chromatic aberration would just come into view like this, like full force. And eventually I got fed up with it and then I began a search again to um, upgrade from these. So this was my, you know, full size daily driver. These were not in the picture at the time, neither were these but I was looking to replace uh, these with something with uh, better um, 
optical performance is primarily chasing out the chromatic aberration. And so what I did after that is I went ahead and I purchased um, the Zeiss SF 8x42s, which you see here, and I bought the um, Swarovski EL 8.5x42s. So um, the ELs were also fantastic. Optically, the Zeiss SFs were superior, superior to the ELs. However, um, the reason uh, the ELs chromatic aberration, I feel like also is very good, but definitely could be better. And so um, after comparing comparing the Zeiss SF 8, 8x42s right here and the uh, in the Swarovski um, C, C, uh, ELs, 8.5 by 42, I ended up with these. Uh, not because I didn't like the ELs. Actually, I think the ELs were great, and I found a, they were, I got them at an excellent price. I think, I, I believe I played 1800 for them. Um, is that right? Or maybe 2100 I can't remember. But these were considerably more expensive. I think I ended up getting these close to 3000 um, 2,800 or 2,900. I paid, I paid too much. But I mean, when I got these, and I looked through them, it was literally perfect. I'd never set looked through a pair of binoculars that were um, as perfect as these, and it was, it was literally love at first sight. And so, after after looking through them. Um, I was I was blown away and then and and then I checked to make sure I was had my fingers crossed just making sure that you know I hope these will correct for my vision beyond infinity and sure enough they did and that was it I was I was content um, these are, are fantastic and so I the Swarov EL Swarovski ELs they couldn't correct for my vision past infinity so those were already a deal breaker. I knew I wouldn't keep those. Um, and I'm glad that these did, because the view out of these are definitely superior, mainly in the field of view, as well as the control of chromatic aberration. Um, so once, so th that's my journey to ending up with these. And the thing I really love about these is, out of all these binoculars I've tried, these are the only pair I feel as though we're designed with st the design started with literally a blank sheet of paper. Um, these are seem like they're designed from ground up, and everything from the glass, the ergonomics, the weight distribution. I'm going to do another um, detailed review on these because this that this few minutes I'm going to talk about this does not do it justice. But like I said, if I could. And so that's how I um, and ended up with these. These are th these are fantastic. There's, I feel like of all the binoculars I own, these are the ones that I think are, is clear to me or apparent to me that were designed with like a totally blank blank piece of paper. Like they were designed from ground up, and you see um, things in. The design of these binoculars you don't see in other binocular designs like this or at least that often like this triple bridge thing this bridge right here is just there to hold the focus wheel so this this video doesn't one video doesn't do um, justice to these binoculars but uh, the super folk smooth focus wheel these are made out of magnesium if I had to knock this and there's there, there's two areas where I would maybe say that are ultra minor if I would make a perfect binocular, these um, loops are actually not made out of magnesium. It's not part of the chassis. It's it's actually made out of plastic, which of course you can never tell, but they are. That's okay. These are made out of magnesium. Magnesium, and the other thing is the the, the greenish color cast or tint. Uh, I wish it was neutral. But it doesn't bother me at all viewing these because of the op because these sheer optical performance is phenomenal, 
So I have no, um, other than those two things, I think these are literally perfect. And those two things are so minor, this being made out of plastic and this never so slight green, green, greenish color cast. I believe it's not even worth mentioning, but you know, if, you, if I had to pick, those were the two things I'd pick. Everything else, I wouldn't change anything about it. Even the weight distribution on this, they, how they advertise that it's more towards the back, that's all correct. And so that's my journey. Um, if I had to, if I had to uh, suppose that I didn't have the limitation of correcting for my vision past infinity, if I had to recommend an entry level binocular, ProStaff 7S, 8x42, no questions. Um, if you just need the best for the budget, ProStaff 7S, 8x42s. Uh, and then if I had to recommend a good, like, okay, you want a really good set of binoculars, um, and you don't, you want to minimally com compromise on optical quality without um, breaking the bank, I would say Swarovski SLCs. I feel like if I were to give recommendations at different price points, I would say ProStaff 7S. And then if you're moving up and you're wanting to go to Monarch 5s at close to three or 400, Monarch 5s are great. I wouldn't go to these actually. I would go to, I would say Nikon ProStaff 7S, 8x42s. Then I would suggest even over these, um, the Monarch 7s, and I did never own those, or never tried them, but I tried them back to back with these in a store, and I found very, very, very minor differences. Not enough to justify almost twice the cost for this. So the, I would go for the ProSaf 7S, then the Monarch 7s, or M7s now. The Monarch 7s have been uh, discontinued, so they're now the Monarch M7s. Then, and that has a polycarbonate body, but I mean, it's lighter and you lose almost nothing to this other than construction and, and a touch of optical quality. And then I would go to, from the ProSaf 7S, then the Monarch M7s. Then I would up, then after the Monarch uh, M7s, I would say you're looking at Alpha Territory binoculars. And from that point on, I would skip these and I would go straight away to Swarovski EL, Zeiss SFs, or um, Swarovski NL Pures. And honestly, at that point, it's personal preference. I mean, I've, ne I've, I've never looked through a pair of Swarovski um, NL Pures. However, based on the specifications online, uh, they don't correct for my vision um, past infinity. And from what I've re also read online is that it's, basically a preference between, it's a preference call between these and those. So with that said, I would say um, after the Monarch 7s, I believe you're looking at um, a cost budget non-issue. And so that goes to speak volumes regarding the Mo Nikon Monarch line. Another thing I want to say about the Nikon Monarch line of binoculars is I want to say not even the Nikon Monarch line specifically, about Nikon binoculars, period. Moving from the 7S all the way up to these Monarch HGs, the changes between the different models are there, but it's so deliberate, it's scary, it's incremental. And every single step of the way is just slightly better than the last. Just slightly better than the last. Just slightly better than the last. And with that said, I feel like the ProSaf 7S, phenomenal value for the picture quality you get, because even the 7S compared to these, of course there's a difference. But, I mean, we're talking small per single, we're talking about small percents of differences. Um, and so I think at a budget or entry level, ProSaf 7S or any of the, honestly, any of the Nikon binoculars, you're getting your value is without a doubt. Um, there are certain sweet spots, and in my opinion, that's the 7S, then the Monarch 7s, and then beyond the Monarch 7s, I feel like you should start looking at, you know, Zeiss and Swarovski. And like I don't have any experience with, believe it or not. Just, um, so I'm not gonna even comment on that. Now, that brings us to the next point. 
So that's, those are everything we've discussed is my journey through full size binoculars. Now, I always like to complement my full size binocular with a, with a um, compact set. And now I'll go through the compact set of binoculars that I've um, tried. And so I first and first had a pair of Monarch Pro Staff 7S 8x30 binoculars, and those were great. Those are amazing. But of course, they're softer on the edges. They were, there's always optical flaws for, you know, you know, a sub $200 pair of binoculars. But they were, they were really good for the compact little set of binoculars they were. They were awesome. So from the, mo once I got these, after looking through the Monarch, yeah, I'm sorry, after looking through the ProSaf 7S 8x30s, it was just such a disappointment. And it got to the point where I was, I still had my Monarch 5s at the time. I was using, utilize, using those as my compact set of binoculars. But then I, you get in this little thing where they're not that much smaller than these, so you might as well just take these. So I needed some, I wanted something more compact. Um, so I went ahead and I tried out the Monarch M7 8x30s. And I found those to be very good. But at that point, again, this was my benchmark and I felt like I'm sacrificing a considerable amount in optical quality by going compact. And so my the way I thought about it is, you know, if I'm if I'm when I'm using the compact set of binoculars during hiking or travel, I don't want to ever feel as though I should have brought these. And that was a pretty tall, tall mark to beat. Um, and so the Monarch M7s, definitely I, using them, I would feel, I am, man, I wish I kind of brought these along. Um, so I looked for close to alpha performance, as the closest I could get to alpha performance in a small form factor. And so I settled on 8 by 30 or smaller. 8 by 32s were, you know, I felt like in an 8 by 32, I was better off just bringing these because these are about that size. Um, and then if I'm going to bring these, well, why not just these? So I wanted something smaller. And so I said, I said, you know, I want them to be 8 by 30s and so, or smaller. And so that left me with Monarch M7s. I never tried the Monarch HG 8x30s, but the Monarch M7s I tried. I tried the Victory Pocket 8x25s, and then what you see right here is the Swarovski 8x30 CLBs um, uh, companions. And obviously you know what I ended up with is the Swarovskis, but I tried back to back the M7s, the Victory Pocket 8x25s and the 8x30s, the Victory Pocket 8x25s, I just found they're ultra compact. Excellent view, honestly, they're optically superior to these. Um, they were at the same level optically to these binoculars, no question. Um, but that 8x25 form factor was just so fiddly. And binoculars was so tiny, they're pocketable, but my goodness, if I, and you couldn't quite keep them Push, I couldn't quite keep them pushed all the way up to my eyes, so I had to float them a little bit further away. And since they're 8x25s, the exit pupil is so tiny, I get tons of blackouts, I get a, a, little, a lot of shake. Um, and, and like I said, it was it went in long. If I'm using, they did not handle like full size binoculars without no question about it. And so they were just really the, optically suit, fantastic and superb, but they were just really fiddly, kind of shaky. And so uh, the question is, if I'm using the 8x25s for an extended period of time, or if I brought them on a hike or to travel, I would no question, without a doubt, definitely wish I had brought these. Just because of the fiddliness, the, the um, trouble with viewing, the not, not having a comfortable ease of use to view. And so... Um, I bought these to try, and I compared these against the Monarch M7s in the pockets, and these just blew me away. Um, they blew me away optically, they blew me away in their ergonomics, and they blew me away in how they handled so well. Um, I'm going to do a, a, 
a review on these all as well, like just as its own video. But compared to the Victory Pocket 8x25s, these these eye cups are fantastic, and they they're not fiddly at all. They pop. They only have one setting, but these these sit right on my nose bridge when I'm not using my glasses. These do correct for my vision past infinity, and when viewing with these, um, to be quite honest, I didn't feel like I I, did, I wouldn't feel compelled or I wouldn't feel like I missed out or that I would never feel like oh I wish I should have brought these and that's what and they're super compact um, and so these come in at 17.6 ounces the Monarch M7s 8x30s came, come in at 16.4 ounces so these are larger than the Monarch M7s 8x30s but in spite of the form factor being larger the weight was only one ounce heavier and how they handle they handle a little bit better than the Monarch M7s but where these really take the where these really won was how well how how optically superior how much how much more optically superior these were to the um, Monarch M7 8x30s and they were phenomenally more superior to the Monarch M7 8x30s because in their um, how they handled chromatic aberration were superior how uh, I can't remember about the field of view but the sharpness oh definitely superior the sharpness of these binoculars are are is these these SLCs are sharper than the Monarch HGs to the extent if I'm using these and I go to look through these I, f I actually tr keep trying to put it in focus because the center sharpness of this is so much superior to these I my brain thinks that these are not in focus and then I and then I after attempting a couple times I realize oh, okay I've, I've reached the maximum resolution I can of these Monarch HGs um, and then so that's why if I, I still have these because they sit in my vehicle which I feel kind of guilty about because these are way too nice of a pair of binoculars to be subjected to the glove box um, however I, I don't I, I would never even if I don't I didn't have these or if these were not available for whatever reason out of these two I would never and given the choice of you know looking through these two I would never pick this over this I would pick this binocular every single time um, because I want to say the brightness is about the same but the center sharpness the chrom handling of chromatic aberration far superior than these now these still have a little bit of more chromatic aberration than the SFs however this is the most amount of chromatic aberration I'm willing to tolerate in a pair of binoculars I don't I can't tolerate the amount of chromatic aberration in these um, so that goes to show how sensitive I am to chromatic aberration and how well these handle chromatic aberration these handle chromatic aberration extremely well at the center of the image it's gone when you start to move out to 50% and this touch creeps in not nearly as much as these but there's still some noticeable whereas these have like just about none anywhere in the view so uh, that's where I ended up for my compact set of binoculars um, these ergonomically are, are a dream they have gotten I, I'm going to make a separate review a detailed review on this now that I've owned it for a, a year or two um, these just to make a quick mention these have gotten some critique for their diopter adjustment because it's fiddly from what people say and that you have to push it in to adjust it and if you're viewing through them to try to adjust it is a little bit difficult I've never had a problem with these um, and also because the only, if I'm using glasses I don't need to adjust them but if I'm I am these are popped out and so I have plenty of room for my finger although I do have very skinny fingers but I have plenty of room to adjust this while while viewing um, and then you know I figured out what my setting is and so when I'm looking at through these without glasses I don't need to readjust every time I know it's right there for me and that's it and so that's that and so that's what I ended up with um, I still have these but I don't need to have them but they're just my vehicle pair of binoculars or a backup um, my real real 
my two binoculars that I really enjoy and I like and I'm going to keep long term and has, has helped me exit the search or quest for binoculars are these two and I think they're fantastic together and when I want a compact set of travel hike binoculars I take these and I never feel as though I'm missing out on a pair of full-size binoculars even though there still are limitations but the ergonomics and the compactness and the weight awesome if I could only keep one pair of binoculars I would end up with I would keep these um, I mean these are just I feel like gold standard binoculars I would even I would even suck it up and if I needed to travel or hike I'd remove the straps or whatever and carry it with the extra weight and just deal with it but um, since I do have the uh, luxury of having a compact set of binoculars I complement these full-size binoculars with these now if I if I if I um, didn't have the budget for these and if I were to recommend to somebody just one set of binoculars you have <laughs> I wouldn't mind recommending these Unless they, you know, want unless they wanted a full set of binoculars, maybe the Swarovski ELs. But you know, if you just want something that you're gonna use, take out. These these are very nice binoculars, and they're rightfully named companions. I feel like that's just what they are. There's compromise. There's a very mild compromise in um, the optic quality, and very. And the price point is fantastic. The price point of these is, I believe, a thousand three hundred, thousand four hundred, right now, and they're phenomenal. Um, are they flawless optically? Absolutely not. Are they a little bit? Are they not like for viewing at night? These are probably a little bit too dark. I mean, these objectives are only thirty millimeters. These are, it's 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 a little bit ridiculous to compare a. 8 by 30 with an 8 by 42 but the fact that you could even make that comparison just speaks volumes of how well designed these binoculars are and how um, excellent they are and so if you just want to have one and your primary focus is you know like you, you also have a consideration for travel and hiking and weight you could only have one I would take these um, yeah, I'm a little bit of you know I like no compromise, a little bit of optics, you know, nerd. So I, I would, if I could only have one, I'd take these. But if I was on a budget and I really wanted a nice compact form factor to kind of fit all sorts of uses, I would have no problem with this either. Um, so of all my, all 12 binoculars I've gone through, I've ended up with these two. And it was a journey. And now I've, for the most part, have exited that journey. Um, the only other thing I can say is I would I am I want to maybe try or I could possibly recommend to take a look like if this is too big and this is too little and you're looking for something with you know flawless optical qualities without a 30 uh, objective 30 millimeter lens compromise and maybe not this much weight I would say another thing I'm very I've wanted to try is the Victory SF 8x32s that I've heard very very good things about and it may it would probably fit very nicely between these two now I don't have a reason to try it because those 8x32s are very very similar in weight and you know when I'm when I'm looking at binoculars I don't focus too much on the size as much as I do on the weight because usually it's in a backpack or something <clears throat> of course size is a consideration as well but I'm really chasing the weight and that's where I found these were very interesting because the Monarch M7 8x30s are super compact I mean like ultra compact maybe like this big but these are only one ounce heavier and so I was willing to sacrifice that super compactness and one ounce for the superior optical quality of these um, SLC, these, I'm sorry, Monarch, I'm sorry, the Swarovski CLs um, compared to the Monarch uh, M7 8x32, 8x30s. 
Um, for my knowledge, Nikon doesn't currently have any 8x32s. Um, so that's that. So these are the two I've ended up with that I really enjoy. I hope this video helps anyone who's looking for binoculars. I want to make one more honorable mention, which I have tried, um, which <laughs> is, is, a, is almost a stupid amount of value, and that would be the Koa, Koa 8x30 YF2 Paro Prism Binoculars. I kept reading positive reviews about those, um, and I have I have uh, had Paros in the past, and the amount of optical quality you get for the price is crazy. Because I mean, the way Paros are designed, I believe it only bounces the light four times. One, two, I, be, I believe four times, as opposed to these have to bounce light five times in, in roof prisms, and so. Uh, just by the nature of not having to bounce the light an additional time, uh, your, the amount of optical quality you're able to get for, at a certain price point for Paros is insane. And so the Koa 8x30 YF2s are amazing binoculars for optical quality. And the chromatic aberration control is unreal. It's almost like, it's. I, I was just so surprised. Um, also, the price, it was, I think, 120 bucks, 110 bucks. It's insane. Now, there are limitations, and the main limitation I found in the Koas were not the optical view, but rather the ergonomics. That focus wheel was just like sludge, kind of vague, spongy. Um, I mean, when you're coming from something like this, there's just no no comparison and so um, if, if you are on an ultra budget and you're just after if you're on an ultra budget and you're just strictly after optical quality Koa 8x30 YF 2's Paro Prism binocular amazing I can't remember if they are um, <coughs> they are uh, waterproof or not but I mean the optical quality was like almost on the level of these not quite of course but crazy considering these are 10 times the cost of those so hopefully this helps anybody looking for a pair of binoculars and that's my journey through the <coughs> excuse me 12 different binoculars I had tried and um, hopefully that helps